Right, so it is 10 p.m. right now, and I thought it'd be a perfect time to do a physics tier list. There is a van outside my house that's unloading exactly one tiny little box, so if you hear a lot of banging, I'm very sorry about that. And second of all, my sister is coughing in the next room because she's very ill, so be nice to her. And also, yes, this used to be my sister's room. Let's start off with mechanics. And for this one, I didn't actually know what kind of picture I should use, so I decided to use the picture of a mechanic, which I guess it counts. So I would say mechanics is an all-around very decent subject. It's a good test of your physics understanding because it's, it's quite basic, but also it tests a lot of logic. Um, that you would use in the everyday world. So if you've got a good understanding of mechanics, you'd, you'd understand physics pretty well, I'd say. One of the downsides is that it is very basic and there's, there's no flavour to it. It's like if you had just pure bone broth, you know, which is good in a way, but also it's not very spicy. You know, there's, there's only a couple situations really where you could have mechanics like rocket, car and boat. So for that, I would give it a B tier. Oh wait, I meant to actually move the mouse whilst I'm <laughs> whilst I'm doing the talking and yes I am using Google Drawing so don't hate me. <laughs> I'll try and be more synchronized. Our second one is thermodynamics and very similar to mechanics I would say that it's all around a very decent subject I mean it has an application to pretty much everything because it's fairly basic and that's also its downside in that it's very boring and it's just heat transfer and engines. <laughs> also there's this really weird diagram that my lecturer used to like a lot so that's also another downside. So overall I think I would give thermodynamics a C. See look I'm doing it nice and synchronized now. Ha ha ha. So our next one is thermodynamics and you can see I've selected it over there. It's the picture with the solenoid. Um, I would say that this is a little bit of a step up from that from that simple broth and it would be like adding onion and garlic to it, if you see what I mean. It's not nothing like a paprika or a, a butch tea pepper, but it's still good and very tasty nonetheless. I think this is the subject that starts to combine a lot of ph physics, and I know of course it's electricity and magnetism combined, but still, i would noticed a lot of students get eureka moments with this subject, and I did as well. It definitely awoken a lot of like physics understanding for me. And it does explain a lot of seemingly magical phenomena, like the aurora borealis, um, floating things, you know, <laughs> etc. I think the drawback is our interpretation and the history of electromagnetism itself, which has led to a lot of confusion. For example, we always draw electrons going forwards, but that the current goes backwards because we didn't know that electrons were negative, which is really annoying. But I would say electromagnetism is a really good subject, and I would give it an A. Okay, so next up is waves. Screw that. First of all, it involves quantum numbers and it evokes quantum mechanics, which just makes it an all around awful subject. Although I guess there are some real world applications like uh, resonant frequency and uh, things like that, like in bridges and stuff. So I guess we can give it not an F tier, but probably a nice D tier. Ooh, it matches. All right, so next up is radioactivity. I would say that this is somewhat spicy, but not in the same kind of spice as pepper spice. I would say that this is like a wasabi of physics. The topic itself is actually extremely interesting, unlike maybe free body diagrams that come with mechanics. And research of it has been extremely risky only up until very, very, very recently. And not only that, but Marie Curie basically invented radioactivity and she's the real G. So for that reason, I need to put radioactivity up into the S tier. So next up is particle physics. I would say that overall, this is a fairly basic area of physics, although if you are the one researching it, I think that's where the real magic happens with this subject. Despite it being basic, I'd say this is the one you're most likely to impress someone with, because most of it is just memorization of particles, like you have to memorize their properties like spin, strangeness, um, beauty, I hate all that stuff, but anyway, it is just a one big memory game when it comes to even just university particle physics, which is great. And so taking this subject, you're definitely guaranteed an easy A. 
And speaking of A, I think this deserves an A tier. So next up is condensed matter, and overall I would say no. It is probably the most used subject in the real world, it has a huge high demand, I mean there are l there is a huge need of solid state physicists, and I mean it's heavily used in computers like chips and whatnot. Um, but the problem is it doesn't actually make sense, and the only way that you can learn about solid state physics is through tennis balls with bamboo skewers stuck in them, it seems. So I'm gonna give this one an E tier. And also, phonons aren't real, you can't convince me. Next up is quantum mechanics. I would say this is disgusting. Apart from computing in the future, I would say this will be never ever applicable to the real world because the real world is classic. And none of my lectures actually remember quantum mechanics and you can ask them yourselves except for my quantum mechanics lectures obviously. And plus, it's not even that great, I mean, why don't you just go and tell me the second order perturbation of this wave function? Go on. See, it's not that nice. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a huge F tier. Next up is optics. I would say it's solid, <laughs> literally, it's very useful. Um, it basically requires a lot of angles and understanding of angles and just a, a it's basically like a speciality of mechanics essentially so if you've got mechanics down I think you can do out optics pretty well and not only that but I have to be very grateful for optics because they're the reasons that they're the reasons they're the reason that my telescopes work so I do have to be very grateful for them but anyway so I'm probably going to give optics a C tier not that it's bad or anything it's just it's just basic, really. So now we're on to my favourite ones, and <laughs> I'm not gonna hide that at all. So first of all, let's do planetary science. I'd say it's very cool. It's like the science version of history, in my opinion, especially- Hello? I mean, you're basically learning about planet formation, and we live on a planet, obviously, so I can definitely see how amazing this would be to understanding human life and how actual um, just planets evolve, you know, and atmospheres and whatnot, so that's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's not very rewarding, I would say. You don't get that many cool images. I mean, there was, there is one really cool, uh, gif of one of, one solar system, extra solar system that I've seen, but apart from that, it's not all that great. No, no. Yes. Come on. Look at that, that is actually really cool. You can see all the like, the little planets moving around. Oh my goodness, why am I whispering? I don't need to whisper. Apart from that, that is actually really cool, but still, you don't get that many cool images of planets and stuff, but you do get a lot of things like spectrographs and um, just other forms of data which you can process, you know, it's, it's fantastic. So I'm gonna give this a solid A. Next up is astrophysics, and I think this takes space science and planetary science up to another level because you get to study things like galaxies, quasars, stars, uh, you name it really. <laughs> this side of space actually tackles the extreme conditions that you find in space and it gives rise to really cool physics laws as well. You also get really great images of beautiful galaxies and nebulae and stuff. One of my favourites actually happens to be the Thor's Helmet Nebula, which I'll show you right now. Don't know why I clapped. Look at that, that is just absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh. Brilliant. Also, can I don't even need to put the credits at the bottom, they're already there. <laughs> but yeah, fantastic images, fantastic data, fantastic objects that you get to research, so I'm gonna give this one a nice big best here. My last one finally is cosmology. And this one, I won't lie, this is my favourite subject. Um it's if planetary science is the physics version of history, cosmology is the physics version of ancient history. Cosmology answers the really, really big questions, not just like physics, physics space, but somewhat philosophy based as well, which is really cool. And there's a lot of great unknowns in cosmology, like dark matter, dark energy. I mean, that's why they're dark as well. So there is quite a lot of cool mystery and and a great deal of interest in cosmology. Now one downside and which you can see in this picture is that um, it does use a little bit of particle physics as you can see with the CMB. So that is one very small downside but I think the this, this problem with adding particle physics is, is nothing compared to the subject of cosmology itself and I think it deserves S tier. Anyways, thank you for this very late night talk on physics. <laughs> 
there are way more areas of physics that I haven't even really talked about or I probably haven't even studied yet so um, I'm very sorry if I've left out something that you're that you really love so comment it down below and I'll definitely make sure to have a look at it and form an opinion on it. Thank you very much for joining me and I shall see you very soon. Oh yeah and happy holidays as well. Bye!